Dear Ned, greetings from jolly old England. Although right now I'm not so sure about the jolly part. That's because I'm on my way to Blackmore Manor, where the daughter of one of our neighbors is living. The daughter, whose name is Linda, recently married Hugh Pendleton, a British diplomat. Hugh mm -hmm. travels a lot, so the only people at the manor with Linda are Hugh's aunt, Mrs. Drake, and Hugh's 12-year-old daughter, Jane. The thing is, ever since Linda Kay. moved into the manor, her health has gone downhill. She's practically bedridden, and no one seems to know why. Her mother is convinced something is terribly wrong and wants me to find out what. And wants so me. Here I am, about to be dropped off at a huge centuries-old mansion in the middle of a dark, foggy moor. <laughs> I mm. can't tell whether the butterflies in my stomach are because I'm excited or just a tad creeped out. Talk to you soon. I hope. Nancy. <laughs> For a Night, Miss. Good luck. <laughs> Night, Miss. <laughs> Good luck. Oh my god, here we go! Blackmore Manor. Spooky! <laughs> spooky, spooky! I'm excited! Well, she has a steady strike. Nancy. Holy fuck, that was loud. Who's there? Hello? Who the fuck was that? That was so creepy. Oh. Ah! Whoa! It's a dog, isn't it? There's something out there! Where, oh. child? Jesus, hi. Over there! I mean, something was out there. Come in. Come in? It's probably a dog. I'm Mrs. Drake. I take it you are Nancy Drew? <laughs> I'm yes, Mrs. And Drake. and I really did see something, Mrs. Drake. <laughs> I heard something, too. Oh, people are always seeing and hearing things on the moor at night. <laughs> especially you Americans. Why don't you just go on up to your room? It's the one with the moon on the door. Oh my I'd god, like her voice! I'm it's amazing! Is, uh, not quite ready to meet with you just Not now, quite but ready please, to meet with you. come see me you. after you've <laughs> I'll be in the conservatory. Alright, thank you. Oh my god. Y'all ready for classic adventure? Oh god, we're- oh, okay, we're moving. We're moving. Let's look at that first. Ludi sini gaudio ludi non sunt. Any... I'm assuming Latin? speakers in the chat okay she has nothing to say about this so let's go back that looks important Wait, what okay we can change oh it's moon stuff okay so there's something we can do with this box but we have no idea what we're doing here so <laughs> oh wow Look at these awesome graphics. Is this my cell phone? The web! <laughs> it's an actual web! Whoa, she can go on the internet browser? Top of the screen, click the search button to search the World Wide Web via keyboard keywords. Blackmore Manor, Essex, Essex County. Oh. Uh, okay. United Kingdom. Built in the 12th century by a warrior named Randolph the Red. Can I stop the- oh, no, my mouse is trapped. I'm trapped! Blackmore Manor is one of the oldest residences in England. Randolph and his descendants came to be known by the ancient name for the area surrounding Blackmore. Pen- Vel Pen- what does she say? Penvelin? Pen- Penvelin? The Penvelins? Pen- Penvelins have inhabited the manor ever since it was built. It was abandoned in the 1650 after its owner was executed for witchcraft. But by 1715, the Penvalins had moved back into the manor and re-established themselves as a respectable, wealthy family, a reputation which remains to this day. Okay, how do I go back? Oh. Let's go back to the web. My stars seem to move. I can't click on it. Oh! There it is. Uh, excuse me? Oh my god. 
To someone standing on the Earth as it makes its annual journey around the Sun, the Sun appears to move throughout the surrounding stars on a predictable path. This path is called the elliptic, and the 12 constellations through which the Sun seems to pass are known as the zodiac. The planets also appear to move through the zodiac, and like the constellations, they have been named after Roman and Greek gods. Mm hmm. Okay, so this is going to be important for later. These and many other heavenly bodies appear and disappear from the sky throughout the year because the Earth is tilted on its axis at a 23.5 degree angle. Because of this tilt, the angle of the Sun relative to the equator varies throughout the year so that no day or night is ever precisely the same length. The longest day and the shortest night is known as the summer solstice or solsticium, which takes place around June 21st. The shortest day and the longest night is known as the winter solstice. Saltis. I thought it was solstice. Or bruma and occurs around December 21. Uh, okay. The tilt of the earth also results in the spring or vernal or and fall or aut autumn, autumnal equinoxes. These, these are hard to pronounce for me. Around March 21st or this motherfucker here and september 21 at this motherfucker here the sun at noon is halfway between its highest and lowest points in the sky resulting in days and nights that are nearly equal in length can i click on these no they're not links <laughs> okay i think i did it so that's those two things and there's a directory Mrs. Petrov and Ned. I'm not gonna say that name. Wait, I clicked back! Who am I calling? This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. Hi, Hannah. Bye, Hannah. <laughs> Sorry, Hannah. Wait, who did I call? Ned. This is driving you crazy, Hi, the puzzle. Ned. Hey, Nancy. Uh, I got Just here safely. Just to let you know I got here safely. So how's Blackmore Manor? A little on the spooky side. And what has Detective Drew discovered so far? <laughs> Just calling to say hi. I'll talk to you soon. I'll be waiting. Cute. Okay. Can I stop this? Okay. <gasps> okay. There's still an exclamation mark on my phone, though. So what is that for? Okay, well, this is fine. Maybe I should check my email? I noticed I can't- the pointer is not exactly where it should be. It might be an old resolution thing. See? I clicked on the top one, but I clicked the middle one instead. Well, you're off to England and we're off to sailing camp. Hopefully this will be the year Bess and I win the regatta instead of those snobby Maxwell twins. Bess thinks they should be disqualified for being too tan and setting a bad example for the younger campers when it comes to skincare. <laughs> but I don't think the camp's director is going to buy it. Anyway, no digital devices allowed. So cheerio, pip pip, and we'll talk to you when you get back, George and Bess. Um, so click there. Congrats on your Great Britain gig. We'll be thinking of you while we help our neighbor, Mr. Bergdorf, install his brand new satellite dish and big screen television. Hopefully our unselfish act of kindness will help him forget all those petunias we trampled while chasing fly balls into his yard and will compel him to invite us over once in a while. Like whenever a major sports event is on. Good luck cracking the case. Frank and Joe. Dear Valley. Okay, bye. Bap. Bleh. Bleh, bleh. Oh, book. John Pendleton. Granny. Granny and the Water Fairy. Wait, he wrote a book? In a faraway place beside a pond since gone dry, there lived a frog named Granny. Granny was content to live by himself and never ventured into the pond, for back then it was a fearsome place full of crocodiles that lurked beneath the surface, just waiting for a tasty little morsel like Granny to swim by. But one day, a beautiful princess appeared on the other side of the pond. Like Granny, she was by herself, for she had been unfairly banished from her father's kingdom. Sometimes at night, Granny could hear her singing sad songs and talking to herself out of loneliness. 
He longed to swim across the pond so they could keep each other company, but he knew the crocodiles would eat him if he tried. So he sat on the shore, croaking mournfully in the moonlight, all alone. Then one day, a kind-hearted water fairy appeared in the mist above the swamp that surrounded the pond and told Granny that she would help him cross the pond so that he and the princess could be together. How? Granny asked. I cannot swim across, for the crocodiles are fast and fierce and have eaten more friends and relatives than I dare to count. What's this? Oh. Can I keep that? You will not have to swim, the water fairy replied, for I shall make a path for you. And don't forget, crocodiles tend to hide in the middle of the pond and near trees, and they hate boats. Should I write this down? I forgot, this is an old puzzle game. I need a notebook. Wait. Oh, hit my knee on the desk. Our first note has been made. Now back to Granny. <laughs> um... Did I read this one? You will not have to swim, the water fairy replied. I think I did. With that, a lily pad suddenly appeared in the pond in front of Granny. Although he was still afraid, he summoned his courage and hopped onto it. Then another lily pad appeared, and after that another, then another. Granny leaped from one to the next to the next, his tiny heart pounding in his chest. Until at long last he leapt from the last silly pet onto the dock where the princess sat. And the princess is like, oh, a frog, and just smacks him into the water. <laughs> she was delighted to see the little frog, and when she realized that Granny had made the perilous journey across the pond just to be with her, she smiled for the first time since her banishment. So grateful was she for Granny's company that she gave the water fairy a gift, a bright red key, which the water fairy soon put to use. They lived happily ever after. That's like, this is like the setup to something. What did she, what did the water fairy do with the key? That's not, <laughs> it's like, and here's this important item, the end. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Silly book. Okay, well, we got a clue. What was even the point again? We were invited to come here, but... Okay. What's this? Oh, what? It's a scroll? Okay, there's more of these. Oh, here's the solstice again. Bruma. Okay. So that's there, if we want to... Oh, we need to put a telescope in here. Tripod for a camera, maybe? Mm-hmm. Keep thinking the cursor is red there, but it's not. Alarm? Oh, is that for when I want to go to bed? Let's cook. Balls head pop, this is Tommy. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. Right, right, Nancy Drew. Right, right. <laughs> you must be Ink Marvin up there. Pity about your kitchen, but we'll fix you up for some Bex and Posh. Just tell me what you like. <laughs> uh, okay. What do you have? We've got some loop de loop, bangers and mash, a real <laughs> bangers and mash. Pinky and perky, and a delicious dog's eye, me fork and knife, just rubber ducked. <laughs> Hello. Uh, could you repeat that? Just go with bangers and mash. We've got some loop de loop bangers and mash, pinky and perky and a dog's eye, and they're all Robin Hood. Oh, I can't see the bottom. Oh, wait, do I? Oh. Let's go with the dog's eye. The dog's eye? That'll make me gooseberry right proud. Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder? So what? Uh, okay. All right then. We'll come round and leave it at your Rory. Oh, at my what? No hot potato about, so it might take a bit. But we'll have it up to you in no time. Fish and taters. Fish and taters. Bangers and mash. What is it again? Mashed potato? What was bangers? Sorry, I cannot take your bread and butter. Right now, either leave me a message at the embassy or call me back later. Thank you. Okay, Hugh. Oh, ooh, that's darkness. Straight up darkness. So 
So is this just my room? What a weird room. What the- what a weird room! Excuse me? Okay, let's go out. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, so I don't think... Okay, yeah, there's nothing behind us. Gotcha. However do I have to learn this? Yes, I'm afraid you do. Bling. Whoop. Wah. Blading. Whoop. Wah. Bang. Whoa. What is this? Oh. Do we have to do the order that... Okay, I think we have to do the order that we heard coming up the stairs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so... A is whoop. <laughs> B is bling. <laughs> C is blading. D is a wah. Bang. Stum. With three E's, not to be mistaken with stem. And TikTok. It's all the rage nowadays with these youngsters. Okay, so let me go back down the stairs. Okay. Wait, are we far away enough? So bling. One. Whoop. Two. Wa. Three. Blooding. Four. Whoop. Five. Wa. Six. Bang. Seven. Bang eight. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I really. Oh, I was gonna say, man, I really thought that was it, but it is. I did it. Hey. Our first puzzle. There's two more, maybe. We got a key. Okay. Put it back. Did it! It wasn't the red key, no, but... <laughs> this fucking staircase. Oh, is that a door? Doorbell? Key. The key fits, but it won't turn. I need to put some kind of grease in there first. Okay. So we found the key hole already that it goes to. Oh, that's where the sound was coming from. But they don't want to be disturbed, so... What is hmm about this? Oh, where was that little hand? I need something else for this. Oh, forget it. Stay in Italy as long as you want, then. Some kind of husband you're proving to be. Oh. It's not all in my head. Don't bother. Ooh. Stay in Italy as long as you want. Hello? Who was in here having a phone call? Um... Linda? Hi, it's me, Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew, our friendly neighborhood detective. <laughs> well, welcome to Blackmore Manor. I apologize for greeting you under such unusual circumstances. Um... And I'm sorry to have to bother someone in your condition. Nosy my Nancy! <laughs> What's my mother told you? What her son-in-law keeps telling me? That it's all in my head? That I'm just an unhappy new bride? That I just need time to adjust? I'm tired all the time. My mouth is dry. My vision is blurry. But that's not important. Here's what's important, Nancy. 
There are some doors that should never be opened. There are some doors that hold secrets which must never be known. Ooh. That's everything you need to know. Ah. Oh. Mommy, can I come in? No. You're supposed to be in your lessons. Lessons are over. I want to meet Nancy. I said no, Jane. Okay. Damn. That was my stepdaughter. She can be such a pest sometimes. Damn. Anyway, I understand you feel an obligation to my mother, but trust me, there's nothing you can do. You're welcome to stay, but I strongly recommend that you go home as soon as possible. Damn. Well, she's the red herring. She probably is innocent. Can't go home and empty handed. It might jeopardize my ace detective status. <laughs> tell me what's wrong. Please, Linda, just tell me what's wrong. Linda? She was okay, never there. I'll let you rest, but I'll be back. I'm here for you if you need me. What if you open the curtain and it's just like a mannequin or something? That would be creepy. This whole room is creepy. Okay, I can't go to the back. Nothing here that I can see. Is that a... No, it's not a door. I guess we just have to leave then. Maybe Jane is outside? Hmm. Oh, maybe we should go back now that class is over. Maybe we can go in here. Hi! You must be Nancy. I'm <gasps> so pleased you're here. I'm Jane. I know you've come to visit my stepmom, but I'd love it if you could pop by whenever you get the chance. Oh, we'll have such fun. Let's play a game. She scared me. Sure, Jane. What would you like to play? Not right now, maybe later. What do you want to sure, play? Jane. What would you like to play? Let's play this card game I found in your room. Actually, it's Bridget's room. I mean, it used to be her room. I mean, she died like 300 years ago. When you were you in my room? Of her in the Great Hall. She's the one with the telescope. Telescope. Okay, so you have to match up a pair of constellations. I made all the matches in 40 tries. Try to beat my record. It's a game of memory. Lyra. Crater. Hey. Nice. Corona, Telescopium, Corvus. Did we see this one? Fuck, I thought we had Telescopium already. Shit. Oh yeah. Columba. Skewton. Aquila. Corona. Oh, I thought that was that one. Corvus. We got Corona earlier. Oh, wait. Fuck. Corvus. There we go. You beat my score! Felicitations! I fucking that beat a kid, fun. yes! But I'd like to ask you some questions. Sure, what do you want to know? About Mummy? Uh, I mean, Linda. Mummy? I do hope you'll help. She's been a Oh, Mummy, Mummy! Lately. Two what's some pangers and bash. Do you know why she doesn't want to be seen? Ooh. Do you know why she doesn't want to be seen? She doesn't want to be seen. I think maybe it's because of the lady in black. The lady I in was black. In mommy's room when she wasn't there, and when I looked up, there was a lady all dressed in black putting something on mommy's nightstand. That's cool. That's cool. The woman left something. The lady put a note on mommy's nightstand, but I didn't read it. That's when mommy started feeling poorly. I don't want to think about that. Let's play a game. It will cheer me up. Maybe not later. right now, but maybe later. You can come in any time you want, even if I'm not here. I've got some really smashing things. <laughs> I'm so smashing. happy to come, Nancy. I hope you can make Mommy feel better. Hmm. Don't trust her. Not that I don't like kids, but she creepy. <laughs> Ooh, this is cozy. What's this? That's my family tree. Ask me anything about anyone. Go on, ask me. Randolph. Tell me about Randolph. Randolph the Red, so named for his bright red hair, was considered a hero at the Battle of Portiers. 
Poitiers. Ah. Odo, that's an odd name. Yeah, he isn't very exciting, really. Like farming and cows. His son Milo is much more interesting. Okay. What about Milo? Milo inherited not only his grandfather's red hair, but his military prowess. Milo was instrumental in the Siege of Khan and was awarded even more lands by Henry V. Ooh. So his grandpa started the family line and got this the name with the lands and then the grandson expanded upon that and hugo um he had a lot of kids and his dates were 1401 to 1466. tell me about albert he was very mysterious and the people of blackmore were afraid of him because he knew all these scientific things no one knows much about him though who was anor he was odo's brother so Randolph had five kids. Tell me about Simon. He lived from 1358 to 1412. No, 1411. We don't know very much about him. So... Who was Agatha? She was a nun. I think she lived in Ireland. Huh. Who was Marjorie? She died when she was a little girl. It was really sad. Hmm. Yeah, she was eight. What did Guido do? He made pizza. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> I don't know anything about him except that he died in 1433 because he outlived all of his siblings. Oh, so these are all siblings. They just didn't fit on the page. So Randolph had six kids. None of them did really anything special until Odo's son came along. Odo had three kids. And then Milo only had one kid? Tell me about Albert. He was very mysterious, and the people of Blackmore right. were afraid of him because he knew all these scientific things. No one knows much about him, Scientific. Though. Who was Joseph, er, Josephus? Yeah, they used a lot of Latin names back then and weird spellings. He became like a priest or parson or something. My mother's name, my mother's, like, full name, um, is Josepha. So I was very close to that. Who was Robertus? He was a knight, but died in some kind of jousting tournament. He was twins with Josephus. Tell me about Lucia. Isn't that a pretty name? If I have a daughter, I'll name her that. <laughs> Who was Adam? Oh, uh, like he married Eve. Duh. No kidding. <laughs> I actually don't know anything about him. I think he was the son of Hugo, though, but I forget. Who was Joan? Is that misspelled? No, that's how they spelled it then. She got married to this duke somewhere in Flanders. Flanders? <laughs> Who was Jeanette? It's Jeanet. I think he wrote plays, maybe. I don't know, I forget. Who was Anisha? A nun. A nun. <laughs> Wait, are there multiple pages? Oh god, it keeps going. Tell me about Edmund. He was into cows. He did a lot of breeding of cows and sheep and some kind of award from the king. Who was Charles? Oh, oh, Charles was oh, a famous oh. judge and wrote very important <laughs> books on law. But his boy, Garrett, drowned while he was really young. Garrett, Who working on some Julia? calibrations. She married the Duke of Ballingsford, but she stayed at Blackmore to raise her son Thomas, who inherited the estate when his grandfather Charles died. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Thomas. He was Charles's grandson and wrote a lot of poetry. He also had three wives, Catherine, Anne, and Mary, <laughs> but not like at the same time. They died and he just remarried. Wow. What can you tell me about Eleanor? Just that she was burned as a witch, but it wasn't true. And her father, James, died when he saw her die. And then the family fled to France. I don't want to talk about this. Okay, so here it gets interesting. So Eleanor in the 1600s is the one who got burned and then James fled. No, James died as well, and then the rest of the family fled. Who was Edward? He lived in France with his father, Le Comte de Roquefort. He was very Roquefort. interested in languages Great and cheese. translated books from Greek and Latin. Tell me about Corbin. Oh, uh, I don't know. He doesn't have a coat of arms in the Great Hall because he didn't live here. Wasn't even a British subject, that's all I know. Mm -hmm. And Philippe? He made a fortune in the New World and bought back most of the lands that were confiscated by Cromwell. Who's Penelope? I don't know much about her except that she was very loved by practically everyone in England. 
and there were a million poems written about her. So impressive if to have, have a family line friend, like this. I'd never let him write a poem about me. Blech. Tell me about Martha. She was completely daft. Daft. She wore really bizarre outfits, and she was one of the first women to ride on a steam train. Tell me about Brigitte, the one born in 1759. She never married and was bonkers for astronomy. She adopted her sister's son, Richard, who later got killed at Waterloo. Wow. Tell me about Richard. He died in Waterloo fighting against Napoleon. Oh. Tell me about Edward, the one from the 19th century. He was a big explorer <laughs> and went all over the world. He wasn't very close with his son, who was also an explorer. They'd only see each other by chance in weird remote places like Samarkand and Walla Walla. <laughs> Tell me about Edward. He turned out to be a vampire and now sparkles. <laughs> Who was William? He was an explorer, just like his father. He was kind of a whiner, so I heard. <laughs> He's kind of a whiner. Who was John, the one who was born in 1873? <laughs> he was this huge naturalist and did a lot of exploration in the Amazon. Hmm. I think there's a plant named after him. Or maybe a monkey, I forget. The John plant. Who was Malachi? He was a doctor of medicine and did a lot of research on Sounds evil. skin diseases. Sounds evil. Malachi. Happily, I'm blessed with perfect skin. Who was Alan? He was my grandfather, but I didn't know him because he died when I was little. I guess he was nice. Okay, so Alan was her grandfather, and then we have her mom, and then her. That was a lot of information. Introduction to runes. Okay. Ancient Germanic people immigrated to the country, 450 AD. Used throughout Northern Europe during the Dark Ages, 500 to 1500. Yeah. Because these symbols were used for writing, among other things, they can be termed an alphabet. The original runic alphabet was made up of 24 symbols, known as the Elder Futhark. I don't know how to say that. Futhark. The first six runes spell out the word Futhark. Oh, so this? Okay. The runes were comprised of straight lines so that they could be easily cut into wood or stone. Ah, uh, that makes sense. The Elder Futhark is divided into three A tier, a group of or groups of eight. Heimdall, Freya. Oh. Okay, so this is the letters that they. Okay, I don't think we can take this with us, so I'm gonna just write these down for when we encounter runes. Although they seem pretty easy. They all look so familiar. There's so many games and stuff that use these nowadays. It's like, yeah, I've seen all of these before, but I just never... Maybe I should memorize these shit. <laughs> it's in so many games. Okay. Each rune not only represents a letter, but an object or being as well. As a result, each rune is associated with specific characteristics or events. For example, the bow tie is called Othala, and not only represents the letter O, it also means that my pen is stuck in my earphones. <laughs> it also means ancestral property, which cannot connote home, everything that is important to someone's security, support, experience, etc. Ah, I see. So, oh, the Othala is home, support, experience. Because each rune has an intrinsic meaning, people in the Dark Ages would sometimes randomly choose a series of runes and try to tell the future from a juxtaposition of their meanings. Interesting. Wow. Monsters. Nigel gave that to me when I was in the library once. I think he was hoping it would scare me, but it didn't. I'm too smart to believe in that sort of stuff. I'm too smart. The real deal on mummies, witches, werewolves, and vampires. Ooh. Lycanthrope. Uh, since ancient times, the cunning savagery of wolves has both terrified and awed the humans with whom they came into contact. In Europe, where wolves were a constant threat of livestock and allegedly to small children and lone travelers, legends as to their evil viciousness became widespread. Predictable, predictably, one of these legends involved humans who could transform themselves into wolves. These creatures were called werewolves. Were means man. Man wolves. Oh, transformation came to be known as lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. Description of werewolf and of transformation process itself have varied greatly throughout the ages. Some lycanthropes assumed the precise appearance of a wolf, 
other turned into something that was half human, half beast. Sometimes the change was permanent. Sometimes lycanthropes could change form at will. Sometimes environmental changes brought about the transformation, like a full moon. The symptoms of dur and duration of a werewolf's condition depended entirely upon the curse that initiated the particular case of lycan lycanthropy. In general, victims who are destined to alter their form permanently usually appeared. Wait, victims who were destined to alter their form permanently usually appeared pale. Huh. Fatigue was a frequent complaint, as well as weak vision, dry tongue, and constant thirst. These symptoms usually accompanied or were soon followed by hair growth, especially on the face and hands. <laughs> Cute. The victim's personality also changed. He or she became increasingly ill-tempered and aggressive. As the transformation grew more apparent, the victim usually went into hiding, returning to society only to satisfy its newfound appetite for human flesh. For temporary victims who could change their appearance at will, or who were involuntarily transformed by the sound of a wolf's nocturnal howl or by a full moon, lyca lycanthropic symptoms occurred not over time, but quickly, almost instantaneously. They were forced to assume human form again at sunrise, either by shedding their hair, claws, and fangs, or by taking off their skin and hiding it intact. Such a lycanthro lycanthrope would reportedly suffer the same fate as his shed skin. If it was found and destroyed, the werewolf would likewise be destroyed. According to legend, those who voluntarily became werewolves obtained the ability to change their form through sorcery. Involuntary lycanthropes were people who had been cursed by someone they had wronged, or had been bitten by or born to a werewolf. Since there was no cure, and since most werewolves were thought to be immortal, these unfortunate beings were compelled to lead dark, desperate lives until they were felled by a fatal wound to the brain or heart that could only be destroyed by a silver bullet. Oh, that they, that's modern embellishment. Sure. <clears throat> I need a sippy, because this is a lot of reading. <clears throat> Why? The reasons for like, like, can't, like, can't, lycanthrope. Like can't like can't like canthropy. That's such a hard word. <laughs> uh, psychology plays a significant role in lycanthropy. I'm just gonna say it like that. Whatever. It's probably wrong. Wanting to imitate, if not actually become the thing or person that one fears the most, seems to be part of human nature. Apart from being a universal phenomenon, werewolves are unknown in regions where there are no wolves. Instead, people spread tales of were-bears or were-tigers, were-crocodiles, whichever animal is most feared. The old saying, if you can't beat them, join them, goes a long way in explaining the source and longevity of many monster-like legends. More important, throughout history, there have been instances of people who actually were, were werewolves, in their own minds at least. Convinced that they had been cursed, they presented all the physical symptoms of lycanthropy and often behaved violently. Because they fully believed that they had become werewolves, they acted like werewolves. As a result, the people around them treated them like werewolves, which only reinforced their delusion, thus trapping them in a vicious cycle. The psychological disorder was no doubt prevalent in the Middle Ages, when belief in sorcery, curses and creatures such as werewolves was commonplace. The power of suggestion cannot be underestimated, especially in places where education is minimal and superstition passes for truth. Instances of lycan- like Motherfucker. Lycanthropic disorder are rare in modern times, although it is possible that many cases go unreported due to misdiagnosis or familial embarrassment. Hmm. Oh, number. His phone number just might come in handy. Hell yeah, we're gonna give him a call later. I think that's it. Fun. So fun. Okay, that was it for this bookcase. What's this little corner? I use that to make cakes for Lulu the parrot. That's why the ingredients are so nasty. Like <laughs> I would eat mealworms. <laughs> that's why the ingredients are so nasty. <laughs> uh, okay. I, th I feel like we're gonna bake. Mealworms. Ugh. Do you mind if I make something? Go right ahead. What are you making? What am I doing? I'm just putting everything on. Some nuts, some beans. <sighs> oh, I made a monster. 
<laughs> I made an absolute monster of a meal. Oh. It's in my inventory. Oh, gross. Okay, well, that was that. <laughs> Nancy's not a great cook, is she? <laughs> Who's this? That's my mom, my real mom. She's an opera singer. It's not like she's famous or anything, but she does live in Paris. Hmm. So why are you here and not in Paris with her? Or is that a sensitive subject? What is this book? Don't know, really. Ethel gave it to me. She said it belonged to my grandfather. Hmm. Do you think Brady Armstrong is cute? Uh, what? Hey, there's are the symbols again. They're in a different order, though. It's fire, air, then water, and then earth. Hmm. Oh, and here it is again. Each of those cups seems to be associated with a Roman numeral. Huh. Yes. Five, eight, three, four. Hmm. Near we have them again. Air, obviously. Fire. Oh, you can combine them? What does this all mean? Okay, I'm sure that's gonna be important later. Oh, Madam Butterfly. That was written by Charles Pemberlin way back in like the 1500s. When I read it, it seemed really familiar, you know? Really? As the moon rises upon thee, fear not, but draw upon the strength of absent friends, toast to their memories in happiness and wonder. With the stalwart heart of a knight, stalwart heart of a knight, let charity be thy guiding angel. Stay firm in knowledge as a dedicated geometer. And fear not the ravages of father time. For, dear child, as you learn the lessons of folly, the secrets of this world shall dawn in thy soul. Wow, he was smoking something in the 1500s. Okay, we haven't been to this desk yet, I think. I totally love that show. Isn't Brady Armstrong so dreamy? Total hottie. <laughs> Total hottie. <laughs> this cat is so cute. World premiere broadcast, heartthrob channel. Jesus. Is he gonna appear or something? He looks like he's gonna be in the game. You had a guinea pig? Yes, but it died. <laughs> oh no! I don't know. I'd really rather not think about it, alright? Oh. Cute. Looks like you're learning some interesting stuff. Bet you wouldn't say that if you were the one who had to learn it. Biography interests, learn, sing, discuss, present simple past and future verb conjugations, French history. Hmm. <laughs> um, can't open these drawers, so that's fine. Der Ring des Nibelungen? What does that mean? Do you have anyone who speaks German? Okay. I think I've seen enough. Let's um, have a look around the castle. So we visited the mom here. Stepmom. This must be Mrs. Drake's room. That's the lady who opened the door for Guess us, right? she's not in her room. Okay. Why is this one covered up? <laughs> just a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Polly want a cracker? Want a cracker? Not Polly. Lolo. 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 <laughs> okay, I get the point. Lulu. Can you imagine Lolo, 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 Lolo. being the person having to do these lines in the studio? <laughs> do you know do any you Latin? Do you by any chance know Latin? 
Squish, De Rogaret, Ben A B D V G, Semper Ubi Sabubi, Morituri, Tatus. I'll take that as a yes. Would you mind translating something for me? Fire away. Ooh, this is not a bird. Jesus. Uh so we've we've seen all of these words. Equinoctium autumnalis. The longest day of the year is solstitium, the summer solstice. The shortest day is bruma, the winter solstice. Equinoctium vernum is a spring equinox. Equinoctium autumnalis is a fall equinox. Day equals night. Lulu's always right. Bye, bird. Bye, bye. You're going to need a bigger boat. I'm going to need a bigger boat? What? Do you want... I want to try and feed him the thing, but I'm worried that I might kill him. Um. Ooh, there's only one door at the end of the hall. I need the key. And the winner is Lulu. I need the key. Okay, not that key. Hmm. Okay, let's go downstairs. Whoa. There goes my cell phone. Hello. Hi, Nancy. <gasps> What's going on? How is everything? Miss Have Petrov. you seen Linda yet? Uh, Linda. I did talk to her. Literally speaking, no. But I did talk to her. Not that she told me anything. I'm just about at my wit's end. I've never known her to act like this. The last doctor that examined her said that aside from a little dry skin, which is not unusual for her, she was perfectly fine. Hmm. Why is she hiding behind that curtain? I have no idea. When I was out there last week, I got fed up and pulled the curtain back. She threw a fit, but otherwise she looked absolutely normal. A little pale, perhaps, but who wouldn't be pale cooped up like that? Something has changed her. Something in that house. Hugh is just as bewildered and upset by her behavior as I am. Please get to the bottom of this, Nancy. You're our last hope. Maybe she's using it as a cover-up that she can move freely throughout the castle sometimes because everyone thinks she's behind the curtain. Where is Hugh? He was called to Rome. As a diplomat, he's always being called out of the country without warning and without any say in the matter. He'd much rather be there with Linda. Although... Although what? Although what? It's just that Hugh said it hasn't been very easy for him to talk to her lately. Whenever he calls, which is at least once a day, Linda always seems to fly off the handle for no reason, which doesn't make sense. Linda has always been extremely level-headed and even tempered. She never gets angry. At least she didn't used to. Hmm. Who exactly is Mrs. Drake? She's Hugh's aunt. She's taken care of Blackmore Manor ever since her brother died. He was Hugh's father. She's a bit of a character. Okay. In what way? The way she spends all her time in that conservatory, slouching around, trowel in hand, murmuring to herself. You'd think she was burying something. Or somebody. Trowel in hand? Hmm. Goodbye, Mrs. Petroff. Goodbye, Nancy. Oh, one more thing. My niece is on call and her husband's out of town, and, and I told her I'd go over there and babysit if she had to work. So if you call and I don't answer, that's why. Bye. Okay. What's that in the corner back there? Ooh. Lovely music. Oh, the parrot. There has to be something with this connection of who they are and what their slogan is. The fuck is this? Betty, Penny? Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> I have no idea. Am I playing a game? Oh, I can click on these. Wait, is that good or bad? I don't 
don't know what I'm doing. Okay, bye now. I, I have no idea what you're doing. That's the astrology lady. God, this place is massive. Oh my god. Ooh, computer. Oh, hi. Ah, yes. Are you here from the agency? It's about time. Uh, agency? Agency? Oh dear. You're not the typist from the spiffy specialty agency, are you? Well, how do you do? I'm Nigel Mukherjee. Nigel. Wasn't the librarian in Buffy called Nigel? My name's Nancy Drew. Are you visiting? Pleased to meet you. My name's Nancy Drew. He was. Are you visiting yeah. Blackmore Manor? I'm researching the Penvalent family, and Mrs. Drake has graciously opened the library for me. Nothing much has been written about the Penvalents until now. Huh. Why do you think that is? It might have something to do with their scandalous history. Or perhaps it has something to do with the family treasure. Ooh, scandalous, scandalous history. Scandalous history? Well, having a family member burned as a witch can hardly be considered a mark of pride, I dare say. And then there's the whole business with the Blackmore Beast. No! Blackmore Beast? It's a story that's been told for generations out here. During the 1600s, many of the villagers reported seeing a strange beast with red eyes and giant fangs prowling the moors. They asked the mistress of Blackmore Manor, Eleanor Penvalent, to put a bounty on the beast's head. But, oddly enough, she not only refused, she forbade anyone from hunting for the bad? It was rumored Isn't it that the beast was Eleanor's husband, whom she had cursed for finding out too much about the Penvalent secret. <laughs> Penvalent's secret? For centuries, the Penvalents have been very secretive. Some believe they're protectors of a fabulous treasure. Oh. Or of some dark secret. There are several skeletons rattling about in the Penvalent closet. Take, for example... Eleanor Penvalent, tried and convicted of witchcraft in 1650. Quite the height of the witch trials here in Essex. Mm -hmm. It was rumored that Cromwell arranged the conviction. Okay. Cromwell? Oliver Cromwell? Ironsides? <laughs> I suppose they don't teach history any longer in the US. <laughs> Lady Penvalent was a rather vocal critic of Cromwell's policies and helped many of his enemies flee the country. Whether she actually was a practitioner of witchcraft is unknown, although many visitors to the manor during her tenure reported hearing strange ghostly bells. Some even saw phantom hands floating about the manor tolling their charmed chimes so they tried her as a witch because she was helping the competition basically so they just wanted her out of the way who are all those paintings of in the great hall those are the penvalents who owned blackmore manor at one time or another mm -hmm. runes have you seen any runes anywhere in the manor you mean like norse runes no, I haven't. I don't no, know I much haven't. about them anyway. Dead languages aren't really my bag, you know. Sure. I'll let you get back to your work. Farewell. Farewell. <laughs> Fascinating piece, isn't it? James Penvalent sculpted it in 1591, although it appears that wand was added at a later date. He was quite a flamboyant figure and never married, but... One day, a child appeared quite mysteriously in the castle, and he took her in as his own. That was Eleanor, huh. and many of the town folk believed her to be a changeling, or fairy baby. Fairy baby. Huh. That wand seems important. Hmm. Interesting. I'm researching Philippe Pendlin. It appears that many scholars believe he was a pirate. Pirate? That would explain his source of wealth. Hmm. Those manuscripts are very old and brittle. 1415. They date back to the 14th century. Odo Chamberlain oh, collected most of them. His father, Randolph, and son, Milo, were rather more interested in military victories than in book collecting. 
Okay, well, I can't look at anything, so... this oh. way. Merci. <laughs> Merci. Do you mind if I use this computer? No, not at all. But it's very old. Feel free to use mine if I'm not here. Who's Thanks. Alan? Alan Pendleton was a noted researcher in computers and languages. Jane let me into his computer, but there was nothing much of interest on it. What's the password? I'm not sure. Good. Then how are you going to help me, dude? I couldn't quite track the provenance of that piece. But Philippe must have brought it back from the New World. The he New World. He wealthy as a merchant in the Americas and restored Blackmore's original splendor after it had been abandoned for years. His daughter Penelope continued the renovation, commissioning the construction of this library by Roger Vizier, who built a similar one for the French general Jean Leboeuf. <laughs> the pair of translation. Who asks you? I came, I saw, I conquered. Always wear underwear. <laughs> We who are about to die salute you. So it's like a bunch of famous, well, except the underwear one, famous statements. She said, a te suet, or something like that. And that's French for bless you. Ah. Jean Leboeuf. Those are mainly Penelope Penvalen's collections of French novels. She was a patron to a raft of artists, and her salon was quite popular. She was quite the libertine even kept her maiden name after her marriage. Wow. Gesundheit. Danke. <laughs> Gesundheit. <laughs> I guess they're just being fancy together. Saying it in different languages. Is there really nothing? Oh, oh he didn't have a thing. Hmm. Even this opens. We can go fucking anywhere. In recognition of Brigitte Penvillain, sponsor of the Essex Cricket Club, 1751. Okay. Wonder what happened in there. Please stay out of the kitchen until the fire damage is repaired. Holy shit. Maybe that's just the thing to keep us out of the kitchen, though. I'm being nosy Nancy. Is this the other side of the staircase? I see. Ooh! Ooh! What's this? This seems like a really nice area if I can find the staircase going down. Ooh, that's cool. Oh my god, palm tree and everything. What an awesome area to have. A Ooh. carnivorous plant. Cool. Do you want to put the thing in? Oh, never mind. It just had lunch. That's probably not a good idea. Oh, there she is. All settled in. Good. I'm happy to be visiting Linda, but I know how much you've teenagers like your televisions and loud stereos, so I must insist that you act respectfully and civilly while you stay with us. Since my nephew Hugh is away on business, I am in charge of this household. And if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's noise. Hugh's daughter Jane is staying with us and would very much like to meet you, but please try not to distract her. She has her studies and mustn't be disturbed during her lessons. <laughs> I love her voice actor. Uh, is anyone else staying here? Do you know what's wrong Do with Linda? Do you know what's wrong with Linda? Oh, Linda simply needs some time to adjust to her new living situation. England is not the United States. We do things differently, or should I say properly, here. The doctor believes it's just a case of nerves. You hear that, chat? We do things properly here. <laughs> Hamreta told me she refuses to let anyone see her. Is that true? Is that what you believe? Her mother told me she refuses to let anyone see her. Is that true? I don't know, and the doctors don't know. <laughs> I no don't know! know All I've been told is that Linda is unwell, and that in her stead, I must look after matters. I must because look after I really matters! I have time to entertain you. You may have the run of the house, but do not <laughs> break anything, and refrain from mucking about with items that aren't yours. Two rules Jane seems incapable of following. 
And before I forget, our kitchen is being remodeled, so our dining situation is rather unorthodox. I've made arrangements with a local restaurant to deliver meals to us. There should be a programmed number for them on the phone in your room. Feel free to order whatever you'd like. Right? That's actually really nice. Um, but also, it's being remodeled, is what she's saying, even though the note says fire damage. I smell, an dis I smell a discrepancy. I spoke with Mr. Tucker at the Boar's Head Pub, but frankly, I'm not sure what it said. <laughs> Picture book in Jane's room. Do you know much about its history? Concerned about that thing I saw outside. The place must have quite a history. Where can I learn more? Let's start with the this one. The picture book in Jane's room. Do you know much about its history? My brother Alan found it somewhere in the house. He was quite fascinated by it, but he'd never let me look at it. Mm. Well, let's just go one by one. I spoke with Mr. Tucker at the Boar's Head Pub, but frankly, I'm not at all sure what he said. Yes, his language is quite colorful, isn't it? He's Cockney. Cockney, you see. I see. My brother Alan and I loved to make up Cockney rhymes when we were young. We drive our governess quite batty. Haven't quite got batty. A pot of glue. Haven't got a pot of glue. <laughs> How we teased her. Pot of glue? A clue, dear. Haven't got a clue. Rhymes with glue, you see. <laughs> Haven't got a clue. I have a pot of glue. <laughs> I'm concerned about that thing I saw outside. It was purely your imagination, unless you saw a, a stray dog. But I will not countenance any histronics about this issue. We have enough to worry histrionics? about. Histrionics? And please do not get any ideas about going outside to investigate. I do not want you tracking mud all over this house. Fair. Someone has to clean it, so... This place must have quite a history. Where can I learn more? Go see Nigel in the library. He's going to write a book about our family history. What was your brother Alan like? Oh, he was quite remarkable. He taught linguistics and computer science and won many prestigious awards. He that is remarkable. Games, especially pranks. And was forever tinkering with this and that. Tinkering. I do miss him sometimes. But now he's gone. He died a month after my husband passed away. Oh, God. And ever since I've been here all alone. Until Hugh came back from the United States, that is. Hmm. I'm mixing up all the names. Can you tell me about Lulu? Lulu is a very old Lulu. Cat. She must be over 80 years old. What? Please be very careful with her. Especially if you feed her. Oh. Have quite delicate constitutions, you know. <clears throat> it must be a robot parrot. He loved to tinker things, right? So he made a robot parrot, and that's why the parrot can speak so much. It's all like stored data. Do you know what the password is for the computer in the library? No, that was my brother's toy. Goodbye. Good evening. Good evening, gracious. <laughs> She's amazing. I got a pot of glue. <laughs> Do you have allergies, Mrs. Drake? Oh, yes. Hay fever. Although I'm not at all sure. Oh, about yes. My allergies or that medication. It makes me feel as if I'm about to float right out of my shoes. <laughs> She's amazing. I love her. Wait, was there a hand icon? Oh, so sad. Messing with her plants is probably not a good idea. Probably not, no. That's not. Okay, so big plans. Who's hungry? Who's ready for some nummies? Some nummies! Mrs. Drake? <laughs> not to you, dear. Wait, 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 what's she doing? Hmm. I don't see her feeding anyone. Who's ready for some nummies? This must be some kind of well, but where's the water? Okay, creepy. I want to look at this, but it won't let me. Maybe we should turn on the water first? Wait, is there a... Doesn't hmm. work. Probably because the well's empty. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have to turn on the water somewhere. Looks like John Pendleton may have developed some of the plants that are in here himself. Hmm. 1912. Interesting. Oh, no. 
Or is it time for another boss? Well, I think that's it. Do we have a task list? Because this is just the story. Oh, here. Find out more about the stars and see if those star charts in my room can help me figure out how to open that little box. Two words, web search. Jane said the room I'm staying in used to be Bridget, Brigitte, uh, Brigitte's. So take a look at her coat of arms. It might help me figure out how to open that weird little box. Figure out how to open the little box. <laughs> That's all three about the same. Five animals. Hmm. Find something to grease up the keyhole. Figure out in what order to pull those levers at the top of the stairs. I did that, didn't I? I got the key. That's done. Oh, I have to... Oh, right. You have to click it yourself. And then if you can't click it, then... That means that you haven't done it yet, right? Ask Linda if she knows anything about the lady in black that Jane mentioned. Ooh, can do that. Find out what the password is. Talk to Jane. Go to her room after 2 p.m. Her lessons should be over by then. We did that. That's done. Go see this Nigel guy in the library. Did I'm that finished too. With that. Find out what's making all that noise. All those weird noises in the upstairs hallway. Oh, did that too. That's the I'm parrot. I'm finished with that. Talk to Linda. Check. Figure out where the con conservatory is and talk to Mrs. Drake. Check. When a task has been completed, remember to check it off. Check. So let me test. I haven't done that yet. Okay, so we can't actually click it if it's not complete. So that's a good way to um, keep track of that. I'm sorry to bother you again, but Jane told me about the Lady in Black. What Lady in Black? Jane never said anything to me about a Lady in Black. That kid is so weird, I just don't get her. She seems very concerned about you. Do you receive a note or something that's upset she you? She know? seems very concerned about you. <sighs> yes, I know. I just don't know how to be a stepmother to her. She's just so... strange. <laughs> Look, just forget about me. You can't help me, and that's that. I'm sorry. Linda, you have to give me a chance. Everyone is so worried about you. If you just tell me what's happened, maybe I could help. Linda? I made a promise to your mother, and I plan to keep it. I'm here for you when you need me. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So check. That's done. Okay, what else should we do? What else can we do? She put something on the nightstand, right? And then she changed after that. Or something like that, she said. Jane is twelve. Yeah, it's like she's a kid. What do you expect? She's probably sleeping. Oh, this is not my room? Oh, this is my room. Oh, the classic door sound. That must be the food I ordered. Bangers and mash! <sighs> a meat pie. That dog's eye thing had me worried. Oh, right, the dog's eye. That's what this I smells ordered. smells delicious. Yeah, that would be great. Mm. <sighs> that was really good. I can use my Johnny Rudder to grease up that lock outside Jane's room. Oh shit. That's actually kind of smart and also kind of gross. I guess we should do that. What happened to the music? She's on a mission with butter. Uh, was it here? This will loosen things up in there. So... I don't need to use the key though, right? What the fuck? What is that? What did I do? Oh, what does that mean? Where did this come from? 
Whoa, that was confusing. Huh? I hated this puzzle. I have no idea what's going on. Just blocked in. Yeah, it's weird. It's like the... She can't leave the door or the room then. Um, so let's see if we can call someone maybe. There was this dude, right? That we added. I don't remember why. This is Paliki. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. Could I ask you some questions about lycanthropy? I'm sorry, I'm about to leave for I a seminar and I'm very busy. Besides, I've written two books and 12 articles on the subject. If you have questions, perhaps you should try reading one of them? I did. That's how I got your number. Well, if you didn't understand something, I'm afraid I really don't have time to explain it to you. I understood everything. It's just that I know someone who seems to be exhibiting some of the symptoms of lycanthropic meta... Lycanthropic metamorphosis? Well, that's different. Talk to me. Uh, what do you consider to be definite signs? Thanks for your time. Okay. What do you consider to be the definitive signs that someone is turning into some kind of animal? Symptoms are relatively subtle. A dry mouth, subtle. fatigue, impaired vision, and reduced blood flow to the skin. Is this person pain? Oh, yes, so the, the lady... The really disturbing thing is, she won't let anyone see her. She just lies in bed all day behind this curtain. Hmm. And at night, what does she do at oh. night? I can't be sure, but I do know that I saw something outside the night I arrived. Some kind of animal. And when I asked to see my friend, I was told she was unavailable. This sounds very promising. You don't really believe she's turning into some kind of creature, do you? Young lady, I believe the human mind is capable of far more than we can ever imagine. <laughs> Pale skin, dry mouth, fatigue. The human mind is perfectly capable of causing the body to exhibit such symptoms, if it is so motivated. Mm. Are temper tantrums symptomatic of lycanthropy? There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to lycanthropy, or almost anything else for that matter. <laughs> but if someone believes that what they're changing into is irrational, or has a bad temper, then they will exhibit irrational mm. ill-tempered behavior. Especially if this is contrary to their former nature. So it's all like projecting. What would motivate someone to turn into an animal? Most lycanthropes are under a great deal of stress. Due perhaps to the death of a loved one, marriage, divorce, a relocation, that sort of thing. They're emotionally vulnerable, which means they're particularly open to the power of suggestion. Wait, what accent is this supposed to be? <laughs> I'm completely lost on it's like it's sometimes it sounds Russian. <laughs> oh Russian? Oh okay. Eastern European. Oh, okay. The power of suggestion, yeah. Someone suggests they become a lycanthrope? Not in so many words, of course. Somehow they get it in their head that they're destined to take another form. They see something. They Doesn't sound something. Russian to me Someone though. Says something to them. Somehow, they come to believe they're supposed to undergo a physical metamorphosis, and so, in their weakened psychological state, they do. Hmm. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. It could be that someone is like... Maybe... What's her name? Miss Drake? Maybe Miss Drake, because she's in charge of the house, right? If she's taking care of her, maybe she's feeding her things that like make her pale and stuff, and it's all like suggestion. That she might be turning into it and she's like scared and that's why she's hiding in her room. Um, okay, so the big question now is this box, right? So there's five animals on it. And then we can change the moon things. So we need to find a book in this room? Or it was this thing, right? So, that tiger thing. Let's just start with that. Is it... No, it's not Lynx. Is it? Is it Lynx? Or Leo? No, it didn't look like a lion to me. 
Let's go back. I think it might be Lynx. Yeah, that must be Lynx, right? So where did we find that book? Oh, was it online? The World Wide Web. Oh, we have a ton of stuff now. Um No wait, it was um this second one. <laughs> what? Healthy diet for parrots? Uh, wild parrots will eat fruits, seeds, leaves, nuts, and sometimes even the meat from a carcass. Parrot in ca captivity will thrive on a diet that offers a variety of fresh food too. Healthy diet includes deep colored vegetables, 30%, carrot, greens, peppers, and broccoli. Oh, okay, so we need to make that food. Quality proteins, 20%, non-fat dairy products, commercially produced mealworms, and beans. Okay. Should I write this down? Oh, yeah, I always forget that beans have protein. Beans. Beans. Bananos. Never feed your parrot avocado. Oh, that was in there. Tea, coffee, chocolate, uncooked potato, or any kind of lunch meat. Toxic. Roman numerals, beast of Blackmore, Cockney rhyming slang. What? Some people living in the east end of London use peculiar words and phrases when they talk. <laughs> That's probably why Cockney rhyming slang evolved, so that one group of people could communicate in front of another people group of people without the latter knowing what was being said. Really? That's how it came about? Mickey Mouse is slang for house? Only the first word of the slang phrase is used instead of the original word, so that Mickey, used alone, also means house. There may be more than one slang word or phrase for the same word. Bugle and Irish rose both mean nose. Is this true? <laughs> is this how this works? The pot of glue thing. Ones and twos mean shoes. Baked beans or Dixie Queens, jeans, nanny goat, boat, Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder, bread and butter. Oh, that's what he, on the phone. He asked for Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder. Oh, so they, oh, I'm starting to get it. Hickory Dickory Doc, clock. The Beast of Blackmore. In 1557, sheep herders reported seeing a creature with gleaming red eyes, the head and fur of a wolf, and the body of a human on the moonlit moors surrounding the Blackmore estate in Essex County, England. The sightings continued off and on for decades afterwards, sometimes accompanied by reports of missing dogs, cats, and lambs. In 1650, when the owner of Blackmore Manor was tried and later burned at the stake for witchcraft, the number of sightings skyrocketed. The beast continued to be spotted on a fairly regular basis through the mid-18th century, but after that was rarely seen. The last reported sighting was May 1990. That's it. Didn't we see something about the lynx and like the moon? Was it in Jane's room? Let's see if we can find some more information. She's probably sleeping. What time is it? She's... Parrot. She's sleeping? 10 p.m. Oh. Should we go to bed for the night? Do the door puzzle? We can do it right now? I don't even understand what this does. It like opens... It bars the door. And then we can look at this, but there's nothing I can click on. Do you guys have any uh, stairs? It's steps. Oh, steps leading up to this. Can't do it yet. Yeah, that's what I figured. We have no hint whatsoever. Um, we've called some people, we've talked to people. I think it's time to go to bed, and I'm assuming it works like this. I've I've learned. Ooh, that's creepy. Ooh, 
that's a creepy room to be sleeping in. Okay, we're awake again. Oh, but her lessons don't end until... 2 p.m. Oh, we can go in though. We can also try and do this. Aren't you glad we don't have to use that thing to cook our food? I saw the kitchen. What happened to it? I guess you could say I happened to it. But it was Ethel's fault. She inspired me to study the oxidation rates of different kinds of cookie doughs. Only my snickerdoodle experience snickerdoodle. away from me. <laughs> okay, so let's see. 30% peppers, broccoli, carrots, and greens. So salami doesn't count. The salami no, pepper is like the vegetable pepper. This is greens though. Um, Do you mind if I make something? Go right ahead. I better what? get rid of the cake I have before I try baking another one. Yeah, throw it out. Lettuce. Because we need 30% peppers, broccoli, carrots, and greens. Blueberries. Mealworms. What's this? Oh yeah, avocado. Don't want that. Should we just do three peppers? Or three greens? Oh, maybe that doesn't... Oh, yeah, it does count. Okay, so we did three of those. Mealworms and beans. Then corn, tomatoes, bananas, apples, or blueberries. Okay, so we have some blueberries. Um, do we see corn, tomatoes, bananas, or apples? I don't think so, so I'll just do two blueberries. Brown rice, wheat germ, whole grain crackers. This must be whole grain then. I don't see any rice. So I'll just do two. Peanuts. Walnuts, sunflower seeds. Okay, I'm done. I might have done that completely wrong. I don't think we need salsa. Time to bribe Lulu. -Lu. <laughs> so what do we do? Where did you guys remember seeing the book? We need to find stuff on the... On like the constellations and stuff. It's 7 p.m. not a.m. Oh, did I... Did I mess up the time? It would be rude to use it now. Uh. Oh, you startled me. You must be Nancy. I'm Jane's tutor, Ethel. Hi. How do you do? Jane is very excited you're visiting. You're all she's talked about for the past week. I feel so embarrassed. Didn't think I'd have a fan club all the way over here. Jane's lesson schedule is quite unusual. <laughs> wow, I feel so embarrassed. I didn't think I'd have a fan club all the way over here. Yes, well. I'm sorry, but I'm in a bit of a rush. I need to go over some things with Jane. Oh, I guess I'll be going then. <laughs> she just slid into my DMs. <laughs> Bye. Uh, should we try the thing for the parrot? Polly is a super bird. Polly is a super bird. Hello. Ah! How good are you at giving hints? Tell your troubles to Lulu. I could use a hint when it comes to that weird star box that's in my room. Ding dong, sing along. Brigitte's coat, be sure to note. Pretty tune, stars and moon. Favorite night, your delight. Brigitte's coat. Hmm. Bye, bird. Ali, bye bye. <laughs> Ali, bye bye. Top of the morning to you, matey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, matey. <laughs> How about a hint? Talk to me! Uh, tiles that go around the outside of Jane's door. Oh, we can move them? I can move the tiles that go around the outside of Jane's door. How <laughs> about the morning, Jane? I might what order they go in. <laughs> How about a hint? Jane's robe, Jane's robe. Writing's on the wall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the bird said Brigitte's. Arms? Is it is this her? I forget who is who. 
Oh, this. Maybe that's it? Take a picture. So there's something on the wall here? As the moon rises upon thee, fear not, but draw upon the strength of absent friends and toast to their memories and happiness and wonder. With a stalwart heart of a knight, let charity be thy guiding angel. Stay firm in knowledge as a dedicated geometer, and fear not the ravages of Father Time. For, dear child, as you learn the lessons of folly, the secrets of this world shall dawn in thy soul. Okay, she's reading it, so that's important, but holy shit, what the fuck does that mean? Uh, but how do we... Oh! As the moon rises upon thee, fear not, but draw upon the strength of absent friends. So, moon? Toast to their memories in happiness and wonder. So that was this one. So I'm going to keep this one down here. And then we're just going to bring the moon over. Okay, so... Like this. As the moon rises upon thee, fear not, but draw upon the strength of absent friends and toast to their memories and uh, in happiness and wonder. With the stalwart heart of a knight. So we need this one next. Uh, let charity be thy guiding angel. Stay firm in knowledge as a geometer. Oh shit. Um, there. Geometer? Uh, fear not the ravages of father time. So this dude. For dear child, as you learn the lessons of folly, this one. Oh wait, was there an angel? Oh, the guiding angel. Fuck. After charity. Shit. Um... I can do it. Let's see. So... After this one, we need the angel. Oh, that's tricky. Angel, come back. You go here. If we can store the angel down here, like that, that'll work. So there, okay. With the stalwart heart of a knight, let charity be thy guiding angel. Stay firm in knowledge as a geometer, so this guy. Um, Fear not the ravages of father time. For, dear child, as you learn the lessons of folly, the secrets of this world shall dawn in thy... S Wait. Oh, yeah. So the sun is the last one. Okay, so we need to get that on the bottom. Okay. The toast. Yeah, the toast is like here. So when this all shifts. So folly. Father time. Night. There. Yeah! What is that? What is it? A lightning bolt. We did it!
Oh my god, you're good at this? <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> well, this was with you guys' help though, because I didn't put together that the tapestry was the hint. Um, that was someone else who, who said that. Okay. So we did that. Why is the music all ominous? Okay, uh, this is not our task list. Let's see. So this is the thing with the weird symbol. That's we did- done. That's done! Um, the star charts in my room. For the little box. Um... Take a look at her coat of arms. It might help me figure out how to open that. Oh yeah. Check. We did that. Grease up the keyhole. I'm finished with that. Password for the computer. We don't have that. Okay. Ooh, we're doing good. We're doing well. Maybe we need to figure out the box next. Hmm. There's a new thing on the phone. I think I need to find out what zodiac this lynx is. Right? If if at all. Like it must be linked to something. Cause it's something with the moon phases. Maybe I should take another look at Brigitte's coat of arms. Yeah. Oh, one sec. I got that one. I took a picture of it. So the coat of arms has um, four moon phases on it. I don't know if... Can you see it? Yeah, I think so. It's a little bit... It's not a focus, but... It has like north... It's like a compass, four directions. And then moon phases, but I don't know which direction the lynx is in. We need like a star chart or something. Was it here, maybe? So the Lynx is here for Solstitium. And it's in the center for Bruma. So how do we know... And it says here, northeast, southwest. So it's north? For solstitium. This music is so lovely. This is my favorite track so far. The piano just coming in. Taking us away. Um, solstitium. Summer solstice. Soltis. June 21st, shortest day in the longest night. Oh, that's the Bruma. So it's something with that. I have this, I have the moon phases for north, east, south, and west. So do you think it's just like, oh, the lynx is north, so... Should we try that? Is it that, it might, that might be too easy. Oh, it's also up here. This is the coat of arms. See? This is the thing. So if this is north, then it should be... Oh, the colors too. It should be red. But how do we... There. I think it's like that. What's my sign? Virgo, Virgo. <laughs> and a and a dragon for the Chinese one. Um speaking of dragon? Dragon? Maybe it's this one then. Maybe it is Bruma, because Bruma has the dragon. That might be it, right? See what do we have on the box? A lion, lion, dragon, and a uh, lynx. Lion, lion, dragon, and lynx. This is it. So, 
The way they're on the box... So the dragon would be north? And the lion might be east? If it maps to the picture, the box should have five available sides. Yeah, you're right. No, six. If it's a box, it should have six sides. But this is next to it, so let's assume Draco is north then. And the lion is east. So this should be red then. And full. So how do we... How do we rotate the box without backing out? So wait, I don't know what this is. Oh, black maybe. Do we have a black? No. Because this is the center then. Might be green. But I don't... If it's south, you know. And then you must be east. Um... It's actually like this. How- oh! Oh! The fish. Fish was west, wasn't it? Oh, shit. So this is gonna be blue. Like this. And a rabbit. Pisces. Oh, the rabbit is south. Okay. Maybe we should leave the links just empty. We could do that. Okay, south and west. So, rabbit is green. That's it. <laughs> Did it remember? Yes. So, this is west. This one is east, yeah. And then the dragon... Oh, is it bedtime? It's full. Um, and then the lynx, I'm gonna try empty. Wonder what this is. Yes! <laughs> I did it! This lens is supposed to go into a telescope that sits on a tripod. Uh-huh. Cool. We got it! Oh, and that's just a piece of paper. Cool. I think it's bedtime, isn't it? Because I heard the clock. We did it! Nice! Uh, no, wrong thing. Okay, let's see. Ask Jane, okay. Don't know that one. We did the box. I'm finished with that. That's done. No, not that one. No, okay. So the only things left now are password to the computer and asking Jane about the telescope. Sweet! That's awesome. Tripod in a room. Yeah, this needs a telescope. What time is it? 9 p.m. Oh, it's not too bad, but Jane... Jane is the little girl, right? So Jane is sleeping, probably. I wonder what the exclamation mark on the phone is, though. Like, I don't know what they want me to... Like, I don't see any new in new info I can click on. Or maybe there's someone new to call? It's gone now. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Petrov. It's Nancy Drew. What happened? How's Linda? She's fine. I mean, she's no worse. At least as far as I can tell. That's good news. I suppose. What can I do for you? Nothing, apparently. Goodbye, Mrs. Petra. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> can you imagine? What can I do for you? Bye! How's Ned doing? Hello? Hi, me again. 
Hi, what's up? You sure I'm not disturbing you? I mean, shouldn't you be studying or something? Shouldn't you be solving a mystery or something? <laughs> I'm on a break. What a coincidence. So am I. What's up? <laughs> so am I. Linda, she just stays in bed all day hiding behind a curtain. Very weird. Linda's stepdaughter Jane. She has this really weird picture book in her room. Linda's stepdaughter Jane? She has this really weird picture book in her room. What do you mean a picture book? I mean, pictures are all that's in this book. No words, just these strange hand-drawn images. And the book is old, like it's been around for centuries. Drawings, huh? Maybe it's a, some kind of an ancient instruction manual. You know, for people who didn't know how to read. Could be. When I asked That's her pretty about smart. It, Jane said her grandfather gave it to her. And then... And then what? And then she changed the subject. Hmm. Sounds like that book may prove to be pretty important. Hmm. Linda Petrov. I, I mean, Linda Pendolin. She Pendolin. She just stays in bed all day hiding behind a curtain. It's very weird. Do you have it's any very idea weird. Is? Nope. We'll just keep talking to her. As soon as she knows she can trust you, I'm sure she'll open up. That's true. Wait. I'll sit a little bit more forward. I'll talk to you soon. You better. Bye. Bye, Bye my love. Um, we can try the mom again. Hi, Linda. Nancy? I can't believe you're still here. I thought for sure that maybe you can help me. Mm -hmm. I know I can help you. Just tell me what's wrong. I haven't told anyone what I'm about to tell you. Ooh. Mostly because what happened is all my fault. I should have listened, but I didn't. What's all, all your fault? fault? One day after she Ooh, here we go. I inadvertently discovered a secret passage. <gasps> I started to explore it. Ooh. And pretty soon I found this really old looking message etched into the wall. When I read it, I realized it was some kind of ancient curse. Ooh. I tried to laugh it off, but it was kind of unnerving. So I went back to my room and found a note on my nightstand. And on it was written the exact same curse. Mm. That very night, I started to feel strange. The curse has been coming true ever since. So it is the power of suggestion. Did anyone see you go in? Where is it? Can you tell me what this curse said? Did anyone see you go into the passageway? No, no one. You see, I'd been warned not to go poking around by Hugh, Mrs. Drake, Ethel. They all said the manor is old and dangerously decayed, so I made sure no one was watching. No, and you were snooping. If did see me in the passageway, I went directly to my room afterwards. How could someone write down the exact same curse and get it into my room before I came back? No, something else did this. Something not human. Where is the secret passageway? I can't tell you that. I've already caused my own doom. I won't do the same to you. I can handle it, Linda. Really? You have no idea what you're up against. <laughs> can I at least see the note that was left on your nightstand? I burned it as soon as I read it. I don't know How why convenient. I'm telling you this. You can't do anything for me. I should have listened, but I didn't. And now what's done is done. Hmm. How well do you get along with Jane? Different I subjects. The old college <laughs> try, believe me. <laughs> But she can just be so strange. I love how it just times. switches tone completely. How so? She'll just do the oddest things. Like one night just after Hugh left, she came into my room and insisted I read a book to her. Oh. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't sound very odd to me. Maybe she was trying to. That doesn't sound very odd to me. The book was on monsters, vampires, and werewolves, and witches. I mean, what kind of little girl reads books like that? She fits right into this house, that's for sure. Really? That's what you find weird? Kids are so, like, curious and they'll, they'll latch onto anything. See you soon. Please. Kids have all kind of weird phases. Like, the fact that they want to read a book about, like, mythical monsters should not be that weird. If, if you think that's weird, then, God, can you imagine? If she was my mom and I was a teenager, and I, when I was a teenager, I was so obsessed with anime, and I was like downloading Japanese anime, so you could you could hear Japanese anime coming from my room day in day out. Can you imagine how how badly she would cope with me as a teenager? <laughs> she is so weird. She just spends all day in her room listening to some foreign languages, and it's all 
animate it? It's not even real. It's like saying, man, my daughter is so weird. She reads all these books, but they're just filled with pictures. Like she's reading comments. There's not even enough text in them. <laughs> what a weird, what a weird lady. You're the weird one, lady. Um, I bet the, I bet the teenager girl is sleeping, right? She's probably sleeping. Yeah. Um, oh, the parrot keeps throwing me off. Keep thinking I'm hearing weird noises. Ask Jane about the passageway. It's telescope, ask Jane. So it's Jane, Jane. Uh, we could maybe... That's uh, some kind of key. Hmm. We could maybe ask someone about it. From what Linda told me, it sounds like the note that Jane's Lady in Black left on Linda's nightstand was a copy of the curse that Linda saw in the secret passageway. Now, the question is, did Jane really see somebody or did she just put that note there? Oh yeah, Ethel, the lady who slipped into my DMs. <laughs> I was leaving Jane's room, I got the feeling she wasn't real eager to talk to me. Hmm. I think it's I think it's the Tudor lady. I think it's her. I don't trust her. Let's um let's uh go to bed until two Cause then um What is that? Holy shit. Satanic ritual rituals going on. 3.15 a.m. Oh, maybe I better have a look around. Oh, spooky! Okay, let's fucking go! <laughs> is it the parrot? Well, this looks fine. Is it you? Are you making a ruckus? I need the key. Uh, time has come for a closing book. What is he saying? The time has come for closing book? Well, I don't see anything here. Is it maybe under the stairs? The kitchen? Hmm. Red rum! Red rum! <laughs> oh, he's not here. <laughs> he's a wallpaper of himself on his laptop. <laughs> Can you imagine having a wallpaper of yourself? <laughs> Fingertips for typing. Notes. Oh god, this is a lot, isn't it? Okay. I want to do some reading? The columns in the Great Hall are most curious, each one representing a Greek deity and each one missing one some minute detail. Although the columns appear to have been built around the same time, careful examination shows that they have been constructed over a period of several hundred years. The riddles I found in Corbin's secret room in France makes reference to the Mercury column and how his key is held in hand, most likely the statue in the library. And that only by persuading Mercury to face north and lift his eyes to the sky will the wand key be released. Oh, this is important. Only by persuading Mercury to face north and look up will the wand or key be released. I'm sure the mechanism to move this is in the hidden passage Corbin refers to, but how to access these secret passages? Ah, oh, so we need to go there. Uh, notable figures, blah, blah. Mid-1300s. Randolph the Red led army against French at Poitiers in 1356, credited victory to a stone he possessed but refused to talk about. King Edward III gave him land on which Blackmore Manor sits in the area known as Penvillain. Randolph was disappointed in son Odo, good farmer, bad soldier. Grandson Milo became soldier, awarded more land. Yeah, we know this. So this is what we all heard about. Um, 
because Jane told us about this all already. My little son studied alchemy, used a dragon to symbolize the Athanor forge that he apparently built. He didn't say where he built it and I cannot find it. Need more info. Ruth Bossany mentioned as an employee at Blackmore duties unspecified. Jane told me that the tapestry in her room was created by Charles. How interesting that the imagery described in the tapestry is also represented in the tile work. Oh, we know that. James Spendlin never marries, yet a baby, Eleanor, suddenly appears in his household, sparking rumors that she is a fairy baby. Uh, Eleanor's son Edward is raised by the sister of Le Comte de Roquefort in France. Doubtful that he or his son Corbin ever set foot in Blackmore. Pendulum once again known and respected for being rich and powerful. 1775, Philippe's daughter Pen Pen Penelope commissioned artisan Jacques de Vaucanson, something like that, to create a card playing... A oh, this is the card playing thing in the hallway, named Betty. I've enjoyed several games of cards against Betty. It reminds me of the game I played in the States called Go Fish. I have no idea. Um, Brigitte studied astronomy and astrology, refuted self-taught. Okay, the notebook she refers to in letters to her sister. Edward traveled extensively in India and the Middle East. Journal indicates he spent little time at Blackmore. Images on Edward's coat of arms are most curious. Each one seems to be showing some sort of direction. The jouster running to the right, the guard with spear pointing up, the crowned figure motioning to the right. Interesting. That's a that's a hint again. In 1900s, John won many plant hy hybrid hybrid hybridizing hybridizing. Is that how you say that? Awards brought Lulu back from the Amazon. His son Malachi raised cards. Malachi's son Alan used Lulu to write his dissertation on linguistics and animal communication. Dig up dirt on Hugh. To Nigel. I'm very intrigued by what you've learned so far at Blackmore. Good work. I can definitely see this as a bestseller if you deliver the goods. Or should I say goodies? Wait, what? Do I... Oh! I actually typed them. Oh, but it's also capital letters? Ah! Oh, that's not one? Hmm. <laughs> uh, oh god. <laughs> uh... Oh, it's an L. Wow, I did great. Too bad Nigel's not here to see my score. <laughs> He's gonna come back to his laptop and be like, who the fuck broke my... Okay, one more time. Who the fuck broke my world record? She's like, it's Nancy, bitch. Sometimes it doesn't really react or trying to do it too quick, I think. I'm gonna do it! D. Eh. 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 Ah, my brain. My brain is melting. My brain is melting. Pee pee, haha, <laughs> I typed pee pee. Uh, e. wow, Fifty nine. Too bad Nigel's not here to see my score. <laughs> okay, good enough. Um, so we don't have a password for that. Okay, should we just? There's obviously nothing spooky going on here. Maybe it's in the secret passageway that we're hearing the weird noises. 
I bet it's in the plant area. Well, I didn't find anything, so... Yeah, and nothing is in a task book, so... Probably just time to go to bed again, right? Nancy at 3 a.m. doing a typing mini game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see this. She's like, well, didn't find anything. Guess I'll just go to bed and wake up at 2 p.m. What's that? Hello again. He was Randolph's grandson and the first initiate. Odo did not have the proper qualities for Randolph's instruction. Because he was stupid. No, <laughs> Jane. It's because Randolph <laughs> believed that the proper qualities skip every Holy generation. shit. We talked about that, remember? I guess. Milo was a great soldier, <laughs> just like his grandfather. And with his grandfather's help, he was victorious at Khan. That was a battle fought in 1417. Oh, him! He was war. stupid. <laughs> but I don't understand something. The Hundred Years War lasted longer than a hundred years, right? So why do they call it that? Why don't they call it the 116 Year War, huh? Oh my, look at the time. <laughs> I need to go over your geometry. Please open your book to page 46 and read silently. Damn, well she got shut up properly. So is she still here? Oh, she's gone now. Hi, Nancy. Oh, good to see you again. <laughs> Do you know of any secret passageways in the manor? I found one, but all it did was must eat. this yeah, six. picture. Do you think you could show me where the passageway is? Wouldn't you rather play a game with me? I'm so bored. I'll play a game with you after you show me the passageway. No, we'll play a game, and if you win, I'll tell you where it is. <sighs> I got this at this really neat museum in the States. It's supposed to be an original Maya game, but don't worry. You don't have to, like, kill people or take their hearts out or anything. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to play. You roll the corn and move your warrior the number of dots on the corn. If mm -hmm. no dots, then you get to move five spaces. You okay. get two turns, but you can pass on your second turn. You just keep on going down this track, and you can capture my person if you land on him. Whoever gets all the warriors wins. I'll be blue. Here we go. Okay. Roll. One. You can Two. go. Pass. I pass. Pass. Your turn. Oh, fuck. So pass. now what happens? We just passed each other. You can go. Oh. Shit. Pass. Oh. Fuck. So Your you turn. reset back to the Pass. Your original. Why do you keep passing? Do you think I'm gonna roll three? Oh, you fuck. Can go. Mm. Pass. Mm. I thought she had me. You can go. Your turn. Okay, roll one. Oh yes. no! So now I captured one of her. Your turn. Two. Rats. Yes. So this is her last player. If I capture this turn. one, I win. Nancy's destroying her. Just saying. Your oh. turn. Oh, fuck. Your turn. Okay, I need you to th roll three. Yes! Oh, no! Oh, no. Okay. I that gab luck come through, man. East hall. That's the hall with the coat of arms on the door. Mm -hmm. But it's not a very exciting secret passageway. You're going to be totally bored. Wouldn't you rather play a game with me instead? It's the locked, East though. Hall is locked. Do you know how I can get in it? My great aunt took the key. She probably thought I'd break something shit. in there. But I found another one. Oh yeah, shit! You can keep it if you want. <gasps> Thank you. Have you ever seen anything nice. strange outside? 
Once I saw my Uncle Roger's toupee <laughs> during a windstorm. <laughs> Talk about freaky. <laughs> Uh, who seems strange animal inside? No, wait, didn't we? Oh, I mean, it's the second seen a question. Strange animal outside. No, but I have heard weird noises like this howling, but not like a dog howling, more like something human. I don't want to think about that. It's scary enough having to live in this gloomy place. Can you imagine being a small kid like that and having a bed that like luxurious? It looks so comfy and soft. Loki jealous. <laughs> um, don't want to play a game. I don't want to play a game. Do you think there's a treasure hidden around here? Did your do you speed telescope? Jane, oh yeah, telescope. Did there used to be a telescope in my room. Mm-hmm. I took it outside to look at the stars. Oh. But if you want it back, you'll have to play a game with me. I knew really? you were going to say that. <laughs> okay, what's the game? Let's see how quick your reflexes are. Oh, I'll puzzle! You. If yeah. you get the puzzle done in time, I'll return the telescope. If not, then you'll have to try again. <laughs> Jane, you do not know who you're messing with, okay? <laughs> On your mark, get set, go! Uh, okay. Five minutes. Hard to see. You always find the sides first. Stress me out like that. That doesn't fit, does it? No. Boom. There. You won. Good show. I'll put the telescope back in your room first chance I get. <laughs> Thanks. Do you think there's a treasure hidden around here? I highly doubt it. I mean, if there were, wouldn't someone have already found it? When mm. I asked Ethel about it, she said that it's the Penville name and heritage that should be treasured. Blech. <laughs> Do you know what the past? Don't tell me we need to play a game for you to tell me. Yes, but I won't tell. Not unless you beat me at Skull and Bell. Oh my god, Jane! Yuga bought this for me. It's like Go Fish, but you have to collect three of a kind of weird things like zombies and ghosts. You go first. She said it's like go fish. I don't know how to play go fish. What's the rules of go fish? Like what? Find the same card to match up. How do you draw new cards? Do you have any spiders? Here you go. Okay, now we match them up. So you ask the other person if they have the card. This is sets of three. Do you have any bats? Nada. Any bones? What's Sorry. That? I don't not don't understand. Do you have any spiders? Go dig. Do you hmm. have any coffins? Afraid not. Isn't this a coffin? Do you have any haunted houses? Nada. Do you have any skulls? You're going they don't to have, have what you need. Dig. You draw. Do you have any witches? Dig. Do you have any skulls? Afraid not. Do you have any zombies? Here you go. I got a match. Oh, so it's three? Okay. Do you have any haunted houses? Here you go. I got a match. Okay. Do you have any tombstones? Nada. Do you have any skulls? Get out your shovel. Do you have any coffins? Here you go. Do you have any bats? Nada. Do you have any skulls? Sorry. She keeps asking for skulls. Do I don't have, have those. Here you go. I got hey. a match. 
That's three then, right? So it's really easy once you know what you're doing. I have no idea. Do I need to just fill this up? Do you have any coffins? Nada. Would you happen to have any ghosts? Oh wait, this is this is all my board. For some reason I thought this was her side and this was my side. Do you have any skulls? Here you go. Right. Oh, I get it. So she was she kept asking for skulls, so then you can like Reverse engineer it being like, oh, she probably has to and she just needs a skull. Oh, I we used to play something like this, but just with regular cards. It's like, do you have a queen? And then, but oh God, that's that's like, I played that when I was like seven. Do you have any bats? Go dig. That's a match. Nice. All yours. You got a match. Good for you. So. Sorry. Can she steal a match from mine? Do you have any witches? Go dig. Any bones? Sorry. You got a match. Good for you. Do you have any coffins? Here you go. That's a match. So I just need everything to match up. Do you have any witches? Nada. Any bones? All yours. You got a match. Good for you. Yeah, I remember now because I was so young. Please? I win. Ah, uh, so you just need to You're have one. no Good uneven okay, the pairs. Okay, my grandfather's computer is on his coat of arms, plain as day. Because it was so... I was so young when I played something like this, and we just kept asking for the same thing that we didn't have. I think. Something like that. The lady in black you saw in Linda's room. Did she look like anyone you know? Like I said before, I couldn't really see her face, but... She was kind of dressed like the lady in the Great Hall. Which lady? one or two you Eleanor. can take them. I know it sounds weird. That's you need to have more matches than her. It's too I see. creepy. Sometimes wonder if I just dreamed it all up. Mrs. That's fun. Drake That's kind of a fun game. I have a rampant imagination. I really haven't played that since I was like six. I was like, as I was playing it, I was like, I have played something like this a long time ago. Have you ever heard anything strange at night that sounds like chanting? No. I should get going. Tell quick, me. quick, before she wants to play another game. Did that? Jack. Did that? Check that off till oh. It's done. But we got the key. That's done. Um, I thought she gave us the key. Check. Oh. Oh, can I uncheck it? Okay, we need to look at An Let's Please, someone, remember this for next time. We need to look at Alan's coat of arms for the password. Because I accidentally checked it. and Because we have looked at it at some point, but... Um, I'm finished with that. That's done. Okay, we don't know what to do with that Thunderbolt icon yet. We haven't actually found the password yet. So that's good. Let's leave it here.